flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, while we're standing, I would like to ask for a moment of silence uh, for Edward J. Peters, who was the husband of Brenda Carr, longtime Dayton resident, who passed away this past week. Thank you. <laughs> Approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the minutes of the executive session of July 25th and the minutes of the regular meeting of October 12th, 2016 be approved. I second that, Mr. Chairman. A motion has been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda, uh, the approval of the warrants. Mr. Chairman, I move that the following warrants be approved. Warrant 18A-17 in the amount of $86,376.38 payroll. Warrant 18B-17 in the amount of $136,133.92. Warrant 18C-17 in the amount of $750,000 and Warrant 18D-17 in the amount of $225.42, all dated November 2nd. And the last three are accounts payable. Be approved. I second that, Mr. Chairman. Again, I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Correspondence. Tonight we have at least one piece of correspondence from Marsha Bennis, Executive Director of the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards. Do you know Mrs. Bennis? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a special announcement that came in, and I didn't want to hold it until the Board of Health meeting. She says, Dear Nancy, after a summer of relative freedom from deer ticks due to the drought, they have returned with a vengeance in the past month. Scientists who study the tick as a vector for disease have grudging respect for its survival skills. Borella, Borrelia, excuse me, Lyme is a spherocyte related to syphilis, both of which have earned the moniker of great deceiver for the ability to cause such a bewildering array of symptoms. Lyme is a smoldering epidemic, and not enough resources are being expended to find a cure and effective prevention. It can cause reversible dementia, heart and neurological problems, in addition to arthritis. So this is just a heads up, a warning, folks. We, we have had a killing frost. However, uh, these ticks are still around, and we have a lot of deer in town. So take the same precautions that you did earlier in the year. Uh, the little bit of rain we had has brought them out again. So this is just a, a heads up to everybody. Be sure to check your children and pets. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Moving right along here. Announcements for tonight. Trash bags, shops, disposal containers, and recycling stickers are all for sale at the Board of Selectmen's office. Call 508-669-6431 for more information. If you need fuel assistance this winter, call Citizens for Citizens at 1 Taunton Green in Taunton. The number there is 
823-6346. Landfill stickers are available for the year 2017 starting today. They also are available at the transfer station during regular hours on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Payment by check only at the transfer station. Make the checks payable to the town of Dighton for $10. Also available at the Selectman's office where you can pay cash or check. Registration is required for the vehicle being permitted. There seems to be a little um, lack of communication there. Your vehicle that you're going to use for the transfer station must be registered um, in the town that you live in, which obviously is Dighton. If your registration says Taunton or Rainham, we cannot issue you a permit for the year for access to the transfer station. You may be able to buy a $15 one date uh, sticker, but we can't give, it, give you a sticker for the year. So only for the vehicles that are registered in the town of Dighton. And again, stickers are not transferable. The winter parking ban is in effect from November 1st through April 1st of each year. No parking on any street during this time. Early voting is still going on tonight until 8 p.m. You have 17 minutes. And tomorrow, which is the final day, from 7.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. at the lower level in Town Hall. The Dighton Lions Arts Festival will be held this Sunday, November 6, 2016, beginning at 10 a.m. And that'll be held at the Rujo's Farm on William Street. The state election will be held Tuesday, November 8, 2016, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Dighton Elementary School. Again, that's the big election, Tuesday, November 8, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m at the elementary school. There are two blood drives scheduled for November. Mannheim, New England will host one on November 5th, 2016 from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And the Bristol County Agricultural High School will also be hosting a blood drive on November 10th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I'd like to add one more announcement here. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, November 3rd, the Board of Health Organizational Committee will meet at 7 p.m. in this conference room. There will be discussions and recommendations from this board that they will propose for the split of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health. They have two separate boards. Everyone is invited to attend, and I'm sure during public input, if you have ideas or suggestions, uh, you will be asked to uh, give your feelings. So again, that's tomorrow night, and it is open to the public. 7 p.m. here in the, uh, the Selectman's Conference Room. Anyone else have any other announcements? Oh, uh, the Veterans Breakfast, uh, you can still call Don Hershey right. and make a reservation. It's a free breakfast for veterans, and it's going to be held at the Primetime Building on uh, November the 11th, and the uh, breakfast is being catered by Alice's Restaurant. So uh, any veteran that would like to attend, please contact uh, John Hershey here at Town Hall. Okay. Do we have any old business? No old business. No old business. New business. First on the agenda, review, discuss, and act on a special town election ballot question for debt exclusion vote for the proposed Dighton Police Station project. We have a little memo sent to us from our town clerk, Susanna Medeiros. Uh, the subject matter is the ballot question for the debt ex exclusion vote. Please insert on the ballot for a debt exclusion for additional funding for the new police station. Pursuant to a vote of the October 27, 2016 special town meeting, the following question. Shall the town of Dighton be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay to for the bonds to be issued in order to finance the design 
construction, furnishing, and equipping of a new police headquarters and communications center, including all costs incidental and related thereto. We will also include the text of the question in the warrant for the January 10th, 2017, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. special town election. Thank you for your attention to this matter, and the three selectmen will sign this. If so, voted on. I'll make the motion to uh, sign that warrant, that notice. And I will happily second that. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. That was 8 a.m. to what? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. January 10th. Okay. Does anyone know what day that is of the week? I'll check in a minute. Thank you. 10th. A Tuesday. A Tuesday. Oh, a Tuesday election. How about that? Oh, that's right. That's the week before the uh, holiday. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. All right, next on the agenda, we review, review, discuss, and act on a vote to allow the building commissioner to work in other communities. I'm going to um, pass this on to my colleague, Mrs. Goulart. Uh, she has a little more information on which uh, to present. Did we notify Jim that this was yes. coming up? Yes, I did. Did he want to be here? No. Okay. Um, Mr. Aguiar, the building commissioner, is a full-time employee of the town of Dighton. Uh, building commissioner, zoning enforcement officer, and then also agent to the Board of Health. Um, he also performs services for the town of Freetown. Uh, we had some uh, recent information provided to us uh, as an advisory opinion that was sent out to other communities. And it outlined a procedure to be used when full-time employees in one town perform services in another town on a part-time basis. So as a result of that, we have one employee uh, who, who is full-time who provides these services. Now, we have another employee that provides services to the town of Berkeley, and that is uh, Don Hershey, but he's not full-time in either community. And uh, so this ruling, uh, this information we got doesn't apply. So um, what I am recommending is that, in the case of Mr. Aguiar, that we vote to give him permission to provide services to the town of Freetown on a on-call or part-time basis uh, as a building commissioner when needed. Uh, as long as uh, the town of Dighton obviously has priority on his time and that he each week completes 40 hours of his regular uh, work assignment here in Dighton. Uh, so, and I will put that in the form of a motion. And I will second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Um, any other discussion? I just, uh, go ahead, Brett. Thank you. I just wanted to say that uh, I have full faith in Commissioner <clears throat> Aguiar's ability, um, and I have no question uh, as to uh, Mr. Aguiar's dedication to the town. So I'm okay with that. Okay. And I, I, want, uh, I want to explain um, that Mr. Aguiar was, given, was sent a letter by this board, as was Mr. Bernardo explaining to them uh, what the uh, board would be doing and also uh, giving them a copy of the information that we received. So they were both aware of that. Um, after we vote on this, I will explain to you what action we will take for other uh, employees who provide part-time services to the town of Dighton who are uh, also in our employee but actually work full-time for other communities. 
I would just like to add and have a little amendment to that uh, motion. Um, Mr. Aggie primarily does Title V inspections in Freetown, so he would not be acting just as the building commissioner there. Okay. I didn't. I just don't want to restrict yep. know, what they ask of him to do to, to have him do the work part time. With that said, is there any other discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Okay, just to explain this a little further. Um, so we've taken care of the one full-time employee that the town of Dighton has who provides services in another community. Our other inspectors, Mr. Bernardo, our plumbing, our, I'm thinking, sheet metal. I've got a list of them at home. For the other inspectors who work part-time for the town of Dighton, the community that employs them full-time should be taking similar action to what we did tonight. That is, giving permission for them to perform services in the town of Dighton. What I intend to do is prepare letters from this board with the information attached to it, and we will send it to those communities that employ our other part-time inspectors full-time, asking that they uh, give permission for their full-time employees to perform services in the town of Dighton. I'm not sure how they handle this in some of the, the cities. Obviously, in the, in the towns, it's the Board of Selectmen. But in any case, um, they will be notified. They will get a copy of the same guidelines that we got, so they'll know why we're asking. And we will keep all this information on file should it ever be questioned. Um, I think we have at least four other inspectors that work in other communities full time. But uh, this is the only one we actually have to uh, approve because the others full time, the other, the other inspectors full time employer uh, are other communities. So, so anyhow, uh, we will take care of that. We will follow up and uh, have that on file so that we will be in compliance. <clears throat> well done, Mrs. Bullock. Well done. Thank you. Next on the agenda, review, discuss, and act to reappoint Mr. Edward Dutra to the Bristol Plymouth Regional School Committee. I'll just read this. Mr. Edward Dutra, Jr., by virtue of the authority in the office of the Board of Selectmen, you are hereby appointed on November 2nd, 2016, as a Bristol Plymouth Regional School Committee member for the town of Dighton for a two-year term until 11 2 November 2nd, 2018. And I'd just like to add, this was also an elected position for all the attending, all the towns who are partners for Bristol Plymouth Regional High School District that each town gets to a point nominate, be elected, then the town appoints them for either a two or three year term, whatever the case might be. So I'll entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Edward Dutra Jr. for two year term, the school committee of Bristol Plymouth Regional High School. So moved. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? There are none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Let me just sign the sticky. Oops. That's all right. <laughs> Don't get it wet. <laughs> Next send a new business, uh, review, discuss, and act on a vote to declare surplus items located in the old town hall slash Grange Hall. This is a uh, memo which is addressed to the finance committee uh, and the subject is surplus property. 
The Board of Selectmen at their regular meeting of November 2nd, 2016, voted to declare the following items which are located at the Old Town Hall slash Grange Hall as surplus property. 10, uh, 12 handmade wooden benches, one wooden storage cabinet five foot tall, one wooden storage cabinet six feet tall, one very small podium, a grand piano, and an electric organ. Now upon approval of the Finance Committee, the deadline to accept bids will be set by the Board of Selectmen's office and the items will be awarded to the highest bidder. That will be forthcoming after the Finance Committee recommends or does not recommend the sale of uh, surplus property. So I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve sending this letter to the Finance Committee for their um, approval or not. So moved. Seconded, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? If there isn't any, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Mr. Schwartz is going to be unavailable for a while. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so I have to wait till we get back. The last item under new business to review, discuss, and act on a request from the Dighton Historical Society concerning surplus property. We have been presented with this. Uh, letter from the Dighton Historical Society and it's addressed Dighton Selectman, Town of Dighton, 979 Somerset Ave, Dighton, Mass. Dear Chairman, it has come to our attention that there are 12 benches in the Old Town Hall that will no longer be used there. We respectfully request that they be donated to the Dighton Historical Society. Given their history, we would like to be able to use them in our one-room schoolhouse. We plan to use the schoolhouse for presentations and programs, and they would be a fitting addition for the townspeople's continued use. Because we understand the importance of these benches to town history, we agree to return them to the town should our organization ever close. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Sincerely, Chris Pacheco, President of the Dighton Historical Society. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion that we remove from the surplus property list the 12 benches and that we uh, approve the request of the Dighton Historical Society to uh, acquire these benches as a donation for the use at the, uh, on their property, whatever, whichever house building they decide to use. Before seconding, or actually I will second and then I will ask during discussion. I have a motion and a second. Um, there is further discussion. Uh, I guess I just wanted to ask uh, the board for public clarification. So we're to understand that the 12 benches are the only thing that the Historical Society would like out of Grange that, Hall? That's yes. all they've made, inter you know, made it known to us they yes. were interested in. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I just didn't know if there was anything else that um, that they had asked for. I haven't seen anything in writing, but it is my understanding that the historic uh, the historic commission mm -hmm. uh, would like the society to be able to access this furniture. As I say, I haven't seen it in writing, but I, I did hear that somewhere. But this way, they will remain a part of the town's history in the town's mm -hmm. history museum once they get it all done, mm -hmm. and they'll have a use for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. Any other discussion? 
If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, that, ca that motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda, um, reports. Who has a report? Uh, we both do. Brett, you want to start the one from last Saturday? Sure. So, <clears throat> and I'll just highlight. I'll do the workshop I did. That's the agenda. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Selectman Goulart and I headed out early on Saturday morning to Worcester uh, for, to the College of the Holy Cross for the Massachusetts Selectman Association Fall Conference. Um, I'll speak for myself on this part. Uh, Selectman Goulart and I split up for the first uh, session uh, and I attended Budgeting Basics and Selectman Goulart will discuss um, what was discussed when she attended Municipal Best Practices. Um, I'll keep it short. I learned a lot during the Budgeting Basics uh, workshop. Uh, a lot of things uh, pertaining to municipal finance and budgeting are not uh, innate knowledge that we are born with. Uh, so I found it very enlightening. Uh, and it was an extremely useful to, uh, way to spend my time, um, even though it was on a weekend. Um, and I'm just really grateful for the opportunity, and I think that uh, I will use a lot of the knowledge uh, that I gained during the Budgeting Basics uh, course. And the one most important thing that I learned during that course is, in times of fiscal crisis, be creative. <laughs> and I'll let Selectman Goulart discuss uh, her workshop as well. I'll tell you, when they cut our, our, our state aid by $85,000, we got very creative. <laughs> um, prior to going into workshops, um, John Robertson was the first speaker. And John Robertson is the legislative representative from MMA. And he passed out some, uh, some, some documents that relate to the shortage or the projected shortfall of approximately $295,000 in state collections. Uh, this is based on what has come in so far. Uh, that doesn't mean that's going to hold true for the year, but they were just giving this, uh, giving the heads up. And they outline ways that the state uh, can take action to reduce this amount of money. Some of it relates to um, budget reductions, but they assured us there would be no reductions in Chapter 70, which is uh, local aid, which the bulk of which is the school department, um, or cuts in Chapter 90, which is our road money, and uh, MMA is planning to file legislation this year that relates to planning for housing and zoning. Uh, OPEB, I think uh, MMA has been on top of that all along. And as I've, I've reported a couple of times, um, through the efforts of MMA and, and some others, uh, we have been able to get some amendments to the original OPEB law, which was totally unreasonable. So MMA has another draft that they want to propose. So. Uh, to make things better for communities. Um, there is the potential for a second weed whacker bill. Now this was the municipal uh, bill that I talked about that passed uh, last year that I went into uh, the State House to actually witness the signing of. This is the bill that contains many, many, many revisions to laws or elimination of laws or archaic uh, regulations. So, not sure what will be coming down the pike as far as the next round, but the last time they did this, they went around and asked communities what uh, state law or uh, regulations cause you a lot of trouble, and then they took a look at them. So if I don't think the next one will be as long as the first one. Uh, it was, I believe, 253. Um, sections and it was 125 pages long so i don't think we're going to see that again but 
Uh, this is also the package that contained the legislation to give us permission to establish safety zones and set local speed limits, the double pole legislation that I've mentioned a few times. So we'll see what comes in the next round of weed whacking. <laughs> Um, the, the main speaker was uh, Speaker of the House Robert DeLeo. He talked about the effect on Massachusetts citizens on municipal health care reform, and there have been several groups that have tried to make changes in the uh, benefit plans that uh, municipalities currently offer. Uh, there'll probably be more of that coming down the pike. They expect to have more legislation concerning gaming. And uh, Speaker DeLeo did say he was opposed to the article on the ballot that would expand slots to uh, another racetrack, which is basically Suffolk Downs. Um, I agree with that. I wish we could just get them off the ground, the ones that were authorized in this, in this state. Um, we've been hearing about this for years. We've been hearing about um, Springfield and Everett, and all we have so far is Plain Ridge, and it doesn't look like anything's going to happen in Taunton. But what we all know is next week, state of Rhode Island will be voting, and from everything I'm hearing, the statewide ballot to allow casino gambling in Tiverton will be approved statewide, and the town of Tiverton is welcoming it, is planning to welcome them with open arms. So um, that's going to be sitting right on the Fall River line down at um, uh, where 24 crosses into uh, Rhode Island. So it's going to be right in that area. So I think that's going to draw uh, more Massachusetts customers. I think it's probably from where we're sitting, it's probably 10 miles. So it's going to draw people. And if it goes in Tiverton, they will close down Newport Grand. So Newport is always is now trying to figure out what they're going to do because people that go to Newport do go to Newport Grand. So even though there was strong opposition to expanding gambling in Newport, it was an attraction and uh, brought people to Newport. So uh, right now, um, the, I'll say the closing statement by uh, Speaker DeLeo was that no cuts in local aid. They understand the importance of meeting the commitments they have made to the cities and towns. So I hope that means we will never have another one of those $85,000 or larger dilemmas to deal with in, in February. Um, the uh, workshop that I went to uh, dealt with uh, trends in the uh, community compact. And we will be in touch with um, SERPED because the, uh, there are still opportunities for us to get involved with that. And um, they talked about capital planning. And um, we have a capital uh, planning committee, so I think we're a little ahead of the game. And I think that uh, from a financial management strategy, I think we have a good team in place uh, with our finance committee and um, town accountant. And department heads, uh, I think we have a good team. So I think, again, we're, we are uh, ahead of the game on that. Um, and the person that led this direction's name was Sean Cronin. Not our Sean Cronin. <laughs> Sean. Worked, we have to notify them because he works full time here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this guy, I'll tell you, if it's that Sean Cronin, he must be Superman because this Sean Cronin that spoke is the Senior Deputy Commissioner of Local Services. And then um, Zach Blake, the Director of Technical Assistance Bureau, uh, also spoke at this one. Um, and then in the afternoon, Brett and I went to the session, Mastering the Art of Town Communication. And this was really good because they talked about all of the media things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was very happy that 
our colleague spoke up when the question came up on how to do something on Facebook. He told them how to do it. Mm -hmm. He says, yes, that can be done. And then he told them how to do it and told them where to look. So, uh, so it's nice to have a geek on board. <laughs> <laughs> I think a geek's better than a nerd, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Less pejorative. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so that was our uh, Mass Municipal Association Selectmen's meeting at Holy Cross. We, um, I also attended the meeting at the Attleboro Taunton Housing Consortium and there will be another $90,000 available for first time home buyers. So if there is anyone out there who's planning to buy a home in Dighton that's a first time home buyer, uh, or you know somebody that's looking to come to Dighton, uh, get in touch with the Attleboro Taunton Home Consortium. They're located on uh, School Street in the old school building, right across from the oldest, I believe that's the oldest fire station in the city. And um, they will be able to give you information. Uh, we did have assistance. Uh, the $90,000 that was available uh, last year helped three first-time home buyers in Dighton, and it helped rehab an existing home. For, for somebody that qualified. So uh, the aid can be up to $10,000 and uh, it can help with closing costs and things of that nature. And if you're fortunate enough to be eligible for a 40B home, uh, you can purchase a 40B with assistance from this program. So uh, it's a plus plus, so uh, spread the word and uh, anyone that needs help, uh, it, certainly it's worth filing. Um, the plans arrived for the Center Street sidewalk. Uh, our engineer delivered them at the end of last week, I believe. And um, we will be starting to contact residents on Center Street, private property owners, to talk to you about having your properties appraised and to have you come in and take a look at the plan so you understand what part of your property we will need an easement on for that sidewalk. And um, last but not least, I received an email from Mr. Aldopoulos at Bristol Plymouth yesterday. It had photographs of the paint and decoration scheme for the holiday train that they're working on. First of all, if you saw the photos I took of the little tow motor, is the best way to describe it, when it was at the landfill, and now looked at what is ready to paint, you will be in awe. Because everyone that looked at those pictures said, wow, couldn't believe what they were looking at. Uh, it really is, it's a train. It's no longer a tow motor. And um, it will be decorated in holiday colors. And um, we're still not sure if it will be here in time for lights on, but um, when it's available, uh, we hope to bring it to Town Hall and have it outside where we always park the holiday train with the Santa and the sleigh. Um, I haven't received a recent update from Dighton Rehoboth on Santa and the sleigh and the trailer that uh, it sits on. But in any case, um, the project is moving right along. And thank you for everybody. Thank you to everyone who supported the article at the special town meeting for the upfront money for that project. So this this way, when it's completed, we can pay the two schools, and um, the fundraising effort continues. So if anyone's interested in helping pay for the project, just to get in touch with either Terry Fredericks or Sue Medeiros on the Lights On Committee. I think that's everything. I wanted to add one thing. Selectman Goulart and I got some good news uh, at the conference on Saturday, which made it even better. Uh, we had been uh, talking to, kind of casually, to uh, two selectmen in Lakeville. Yes. And uh, they had mentioned to us in the course of conversation that the South Coast Rail uh, m New Middleborough option had been dropped by Mass DOT. Uh, I do not know if that means, maybe you might have some more information, I do not know personally if that means the Stoughton option 
which is the option that this board is in favor of. Uh, whether that is viable again, uh, but I'll definitely keep everybody updated on it. Um, they said that when, when they said that uh, they were no longer looking at that right-hand detour <laughs> to Middleborough, <laughs> Um, that it was the Stoughton option. And I will mention that um, during the question and answer period, I did ask Speaker DeLeo about South Coast Rail because it's so important. And he agreed and he supports South Coast Rail. Um, I did make reference to the right-hand detour to Middleborough and um, he really didn't get into the nuts and bolts of whether it should be Stoughton or Middleborough, but it was after that when we broke up that uh, these two selectmen approached us and that Brett and I got that. We haven't seen that in writing anywhere, but um, we've got our fingers crossed. I just wanted to say I'm proud of the board for taking the tough vote, you know, in opposition essentially of what Mass DOT had put forward, and I commend my colleagues on uh, being you know, brave. And you know what? I think it was, I think what was, not only was it the right thing to do, but in all honesty, it was irritating to think that the town of Dighton was, the rail doesn't go through Dighton, so don't ask them. As if the people in Dighton don't leave town to go to Boston, whether you go there to work or you're a student or you go there for medical reasons and you could benefit from commuter rail. Um, I don't know if Somerset and Swansea have attended like the hearings in Fall River. Um, but I would think anybody, South Coast is South Coast, and we've all got to hang in this together and, and speak up. Absolutely. So we did some rebel rousing, but we didn't create any problems. <laughs> <laughs> and I, did have a trans I do have a transponder on my car, so we, we zipped right through the, the uh, uh, on and off at the Mass Pike in... Uh, I think that's, I'm going to say Hopkinton. Yes. Somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. I think we were in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't Hopkinton, it was Westboro. It was the 495 interchange. I know that. She, w she was going the speed limit, though. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the agenda, uh, some acknowledgments. Um, do have one of a donation that was made to the Council on Aging. They continue to have quite a record week after week. This one comes from Alice Souza. A $328 donation was made to the Council on Aging and was deposited. As usual, the town accountant and town treasurer have been notified. So I'll entertain a motion to acknowledge this very generous donation of $328 to the Council on Aging. So moved. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. And we have no public input tonight because we don't have any public. Uh, is there any closing statements or anything anyone would like to bring up? Just remember, everybody, this weekend, Sunday's big event at the Rujo's Greenhouses. Uh, it's a great family day. I hope the weather's going to be good uh, so everyone can get out there and enjoy it. Uh, they have hay rides for the, well, for the family. And I think they still go to the pumpkin patch on the hay ride. But there'll be lots to do, and there will be uh, musical entertainment uh, by school children and um, adults, and there will be art displays from some of the local schools and from some of the local private preschools. They're always worth checking out. And there'll be lots of vendors and food and wine tasting, and it's a, it's a really great time. Good day. Right. I just wanted to add that, um, as Selectman Goulart said, we did attend the Art of Communication, and I am proud to report, as uh, Selectman Goulart and I were discussing at the event, uh, that the town of Dighton is doing pretty good in terms of communication. Uh, they were suggesting uh, various Facebook pages. As you know, Selectman Goulart and I have 
uh, Facebook pages that we use to communicate to the residents. Um, we have a YouTube channel where we post all the meetings. Some of the selectmen couldn't believe that we do that, that any town does that. So uh, I think we're doing pretty well, Diane. I think we've, um, as far as getting the word out, I think uh, through the electronic media that's out there, I think we've hit them all. We're still looking into trying to find out the best way to get warrants out to people. Um, I did ask for some information about the method Rehoboth uses where they mail out something that looks like newsprint. Uh, I don't have any quotations back on that, but um, that would be probably the only avenue that we haven't come up with an answer for. Um, something that we could send to every household that wouldn't cost a fortune. Um, so that would be the only way to co actually contact everybody in town. But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll keep working on that. But if you have access to computers, uh, it's out there. So uh, the town website is kept up. And uh, there's lots of information out there. I would ju I'd just like to make a couple comments on on and to the people who attended the special town meeting last week, October 27th. First of all, thank you very much for coming out on a rainy night. Um, as I had stated in my report from the selectman's office, this was probably one of the better warrants that I have participated in since I've been elected almost six years ago. Uh, it was a very, very trusting warrant uh, every article that was on it was a priority for di different departments and different aspects of town government they were all necessary there was no frivolous uh, unneeded purchases that were made by the people in attendance uh, our town accountant had said said that total people and that included people that came in late and what have you. Uh, but the count of heads was approximately 154 or 156 people, which, trust me, is it, it was a great turnout. There were a couple uh, controversial and talked about articles that were very civilized in a very good manner, handled well by our, our moderator, Mr. Bill McKeon. Uh, it was a very, very, very respectful town meeting. And I, and I praise the people who attended and, and the way it, it actually played out. As far as um, the total amount of people uh, that were there, and that included non-residents, you all should feel very proud of the votes that you put forth at this town meeting. Um, it showed this board unlike some of the years in the past, that you tr truly care about this town, you truly think that it's headed in a very, very positive direction. We did assure you all financially, as well as the Finance Committee uh, also added, that this town is in very, very good financial condition, unlike a lot of our surrounding towns. It is run well, it is financially secure. Uh, we have taken a big step in fulfilling the needs of the growth rate of this town as proved by your vote by approving these articles. Every single article on the warrant was passed and without a doubt, everyone in attendance who did vote did yourself proud. Uh, congratulations for a great town meeting and great decisions on your part. And thank you very much. Uh, if I could just add to that, um, there was a question on my, or a comment on my personal Facebook page about there go our taxes. And what I explained was none of the articles that we voted on at the special town meeting were raise and appropriate. Whenever you hear the words raise and appropriate, 
That means affects taxes. So the articles that were passed at the June annual town meeting that were raise and appropriate, which is pretty much all of our, budget, our operating budgets by department, those actions will affect the tax rate. The articles that were voted on at the special will be funded through either free cash or cash that was already available. Um, I will mention also that if the uh, vote on, uh, in January for the debt exclusion for the police station communication center passes, the earliest tax bill that will get into will be FY18, which is uh, obviously uh, a year away. It'll not be in this year's taxes. <coughs> Excuse me. And until we actually know uh, what the bid is that is uh, selected, uh, we don't know exactly what the town treasurer will, treasurer will borrow. She will only borrow the net amount needed. And uh, so that's, that's the other thing. The project right now is approved at 5.9 million in a few more dollars. Um, however, uh, if we were to go out for that today, we would not be borrowing 5.9 million. We would be borrowing less than that. So again, it depends on what the bids are that come in and we go from there. But based on everything we know right now, um, the average home that is estimated, that's estimated valuation is $270,000, would see an increase based on current tax rate of $146, and I think it's 11 cents per year. Obviously, if your house is worth more than that, the tax bill will go up more. Um, and the average business, personal, commercial property t uh, tax would result in approximately $383 in change per year uh, based on current rates. So um, we had a lot done at the special town meeting. We took some very positive action. We had some, uh, uh, I won't say one time and never again, but we certainly had some articles approved that will provide equipment to the highway department for a number of years uh, based on the information we had about the equipment they need to get rid of and also a vote for the harbor master um, when the townspeople voted to replace a 46 year old boat with uh, a new boat new not brand new uh, new to us but uh, um, used is coming from the town of Chatham, yeah. I believe. So anyhow, um, these were part of the long-term capital plans that had been discussed. So we were able to take care of at least three pieces of equipment that have been on that list for a while. And the last thing I want to mention is today I walked over to the Old Town Hall uh, to get some pictures. Um, like I did when the bridge projects were going on, Periodically, I would go to the site and take pictures, so we have a record. So I went there today, and um, wow, what a change from the pictures that were available the night of the special town meeting. If any of you stopped to see that collage, you saw the Grange Hall, Old Town Hall, as it looked prior to any work. When I was there today, downstairs, where the offices will be, uh, were com it's been completely gutted right to the foundation walls, um, n not the ceiling, the ceiling is still in place, um, but the, uh, there was, I'm not sure if you call it paneling or what it was, but there was some kind of wall cover, that was gone. Um, the uh, plumbing, the sinks, the counter, the, all of that, that looked like a, it looked like a commercial kitchen set up, that's gone. So we had this big open room. Uh, when they took out the uh, walls where the restrooms were, they discovered two original supporting beams. Because right now there are lolly columns in the, uh, under the main hall. Well, surprise, surprise, like whenever you work in an old building, you never know what you're going to find. But they actually found two 
huge support beams that were probably installed when that hall was built. So they, uh, one of the gentlemen from the street department sandblasted them and got them down to the natural finish and they're going to be incorporated into uh, the office space, restroom space, but my understanding is they will be visible so that uh, part of that uh, old historic building from early construction is going to be visible. Um, that was a nice surprise and they, well, the columns are in good shape. There's no evidence of uh, decay or damage or anything. As I said, they were sandblasted, so you get to see them right down to the, the bare wood. Um, so the, uh, the downstairs has really opened up. The highway department's been in there. Um, they've taken down all of the old petitions and removed the toilet fixtures. And um, I went upstairs. In the main hall, the, there was a little, um, like an ante room on the, on the stage. As you face it, it was off to the left. And it had a door that opened onto the stage. When you went into that little room, it had, it was like a um, dressing room, and I think it may have been used when they used to have plays and skits and things of that nature. But it had uh, places to store things and hooks to hang up garments and space if you had to change your costume or something. So that, those two walls were taken down. The, uh, there was a framed um, list of veterans there, that's been saved. The wood that was made up that two wall petition has been saved also. So uh, I think that was the main thing they removed. There were some old folding chairs that they took out of the storage area. Uh, but the, and the benches were still there, so now that the benches will have a home, uh, that's good. But uh, the, when I was downstairs, what really, uh, other than the fact it's wide open, um, it will not give the impression of being in a cellar because, um, first of all, the windows are full size and all the windows were open and it was so beautiful today, you know, and to have the windows open and everything. And the other thing is, um, unlike the house I live in, which is a split entry, when I look out my basement windows, which are full size windows, what I'm looking at is the bottom of shrubs and things. When you're in the basement over at uh, the old town hall, you aren't looking up at anything because those windows are higher than ground level. So it's not like you know you're in the basement. So uh, I, I can't wait to go back again when they start doing things. But I'll keep taking pictures and we'll put some more up that people can see as we go along. Awesome. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. And again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and especially for all those people that turned out last week for the special town meeting. Have a nice weekend. Cable, as usual, thank you very much. Good night, all.